Good day everyone! I'm Nika Katigbak, I'm a preschool teacher, and I'm here to share with you today my story. Growing up, I always felt very lost and very different. I didn't know who I was, and when I'd compared myself to my siblings, I'd feel very different because all of them excelled in academics while I excelled mostly in arts. While they were um, able to compute math problems at the top of their head, I would still be using my fingers to add and subtract things. And the same goes with my friends. When my friends were fangirling over Avril Lavigne when I was younger, I couldn't relate because I just found all of the skulls and all of the color black very scary. Because I couldn't relate to the people around me, I felt so different. And overall, I just didn't know what I was supposed to be doing in this world other than sleeping, eating, and studying. Since the realities of the world often felt so much for me, I often turned to television and to the power of my imagination. My favorite shows at the time were Totally Spies and Kim Possible. Basically, anything that had to do with, with spies and missions, saving the day, cool gadgets, all those sorts of things, I was really into. And the imagination came into play when every night before I'd sleep, I'd imagine myself as part of the Totally Spies or friends with Kim Possible and we'd all try to save the day together. I spent so many years of my life trying to find answers to the questions, who am I or what am I called to do? And with Pope John Paul II's theology of the body, and with the different people I've met along the way, I think I've been able to find some answers to these questions. So let's go on this mission together, let's be spies and detectives together, and let's gather some evidences to unlock the mystery of you. Alright, mission number one. The question we're trying to solve now is, who am I? Okay, so for every good spy, we always need some gadgets. This gadget over here is called the Devil's Advocate 2.0 or the DA 2.0. So what this does is it helps you question the different conclusions you've made in order to see if your conclusion is really true or not. So we'll be using this for our first mission. And no, it's not a cell phone stand with a Apple dongle tape on it. So if I were to ask you the question, who are you? I'll give you five seconds to think of your answer. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Time's up. So when someone asks you, who are you? It often points to your identity. And your identity is the one thing in you that doesn't change and that cannot change. So most of the time, if someone's going to ask, who are you? I would say, hi, I'm Nika. So we'd identify ourselves by our name. But the DA 2.0 says, what about Miley Cyrus? Miley Cyrus's original name was Destiny Hope Cyrus, and she changed it to Miley Cyrus. So we can see that our names can actually change. So maybe our name isn't our identity. Another example, if someone asks, who are you? You can say, hi, I'm Nika. I'm a member of the soccer team. But the DA 2.0 has something to say. He says, what if your soccer team disbands? Or what if you graduate from high school and you're no longer part of that soccer team? Then being a part of a team also changes. So what's that one thing that doesn't change? Okay, another example. Someone may ask, hey, who are you? And you'll be like, hi, I am Mika. I was awarded the best pianist in all of the world. And the DA says, what if one day someone better comes along? What if one day all your fingers turn into noodles and you can no longer play the piano anymore? Then you can't really identify yourself by your talents either. So what's that one thing in us that doesn't change and that will never go away? What's our truest identity? So every good detective needs some evidences to be able to say that their conclusions are correct. And if we look at this evidence over here, it says, In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This means that the one thing that will never go away, the one thing that will never change is the fact that we are beloved 
sons and daughters of God. I know you might be alone in your room right now or alone in your kitchen or whatever, but I want you to say out loud, I am a beloved son or daughter of God. That's right! Good job! We are beloved sons and daughters of God and that will never go away. Whether you have good grades, whether you're still struggling to pass high school, whether you play 50 musical instruments or none at all, whether you are super sporty or have two left feet, whether you are good at math, whether you are artistic, whether you have straight hair, curly hair, no hair at all, whether you are a boy, whether you're a girl, whether you're deaf, whether you're blind, it doesn't matter. Whether you're 10 years old or 100 years old, you are loved. You are loved and that can never be taken away from you. All right, so that's mission number one. Check, accomplished. Who are we? We are beloved sons and daughters of God. Now that we know that we are beloved sons and daughters of God, now what? How am I supposed to act accordingly? For those who are graduating high school and you're about to choose your college courses, this might be a big question that we're asking ourselves nowadays. What am I supposed to be doing with my life? What am I called for and what am I created to do? Now, mission number two. What am I called for? So in the theology of the body, it says that in and through our bodies, we can learn the meaning of existence. So detectives, what do we love? We love a good evidence and the biggest evidence is it's right here. I mean, all of us have bodies. So let's see what our bodies are telling us. So before anything else, let's first talk about the theology of the body. What exactly was Pope John Paul II trying to say? And what was this writing of his all about? So first, let's look at the word theology. In theology, you can break it up into two. Theology means the study of God. That's right. The study of God. But how do we study God? Are we able to climb a ladder, go up to heaven and interview him? Do we have him on speed dial on our cell phones? How do we get to know God? Okay, so I will show you how. What do you see in this picture over here? That's right, you see Mulan, we see that statue thingy, we see some trees, and at the bottom, we see some water. If I cover this half of the picture, what do you see? Can you still see Mulan and the statue and all those other things? Yeah, you see her through the reflection. The same goes for God. We can't really see and observe Him, but we can get to know Him and see Him through the way He reveals Himself to our bodies. So our bodies reflect God. And if you put it in nicer words, basically it's saying that our bodies reveal God. So can I hear you say, my body reveals God? okay you'll get used to me my preschool students i think have gotten used to me by now <laughs> so our bodies aren't just there they serve a purpose and it's one of the clues that we need to be able to accomplish this mission of ours so what other evidences do we have for the second mission of ours well most detectives and spies they rely on interviews and quotes that they've heard from other people and i have one quote that will be able to help us with this mission and I'm sure you've heard this a hundred and million times before. And that is, you are made in the image and likeness of God. You've heard that before, right? But do we know what it really means? As a girl, sometimes when I hear that I'm made in the image and likeness of God, it's not the most appealing thing. Because if you look at it, God the Father, he's like, you know, old with a gray beard. God the Son, kind of like a younger dude, but still has a beard younger brown long hair then the holy spirit just looks like a bird so as a girl i'm like i'm made in the image and likeness of god i'm meant to look like an old man a young man and a bird huh? like what's that about so in order for us to know what it means to be made in his image and likeness we actually first have to know who god is okay so from what i mentioned earlier when we think about god we see that he's revealed himself as a trinity there are three persons in one God. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And another way that God reveals himself is he reveals himself as love. Not that he loves or that he loves us, which he does, but that he is love. For love to exist, you need three parts. You need the lover, the beloved, and the love between them. 
So if we put those two things together, God as a trinity and God as love, we see that the Holy Trinity is a total exchange of love. Again, the Father pours Himself out in complete gift of self to the Son. The Son receives that love and also pours Himself out in complete gift of self to the Father. And their love is so strong and so powerful, it bursts forth another being, which is the Holy Spirit. Being created in God's image and likeness means that we are designed for this total fruitful, self-giving love, and we can see this in our bodies made male and female. Okay, so now that we know I'm created for this total and fruitful, self-giving love, what do I do? I still don't know what I'm called to do. Well, lucky for you, detectives and spies, I have the answer. We are called to be a gift. As a communion of persons, God created humans to participate in His love in heaven and on earth. This means that God created us male and female precisely so that we could image His love by making a gift of ourselves to each other. So if there's anything that I want you to remember from all of the talks that you've listened today, or maybe just from this talk, it's Gaudium et Spes 24. And that says that man cannot fully find himself except through a sincere gift of himself. So what does that mean? It means in order for us to be truly happy and to truly know our purpose on earth, we need to make a gift of ourselves to others. So even if sometimes being a gift might be tiring, might be stressful, especially putting others before your own needs, can be a bit stressful sometimes. Despite all of those things, it's the way for us to be truly happy, and that's what you were created for. So just a quick sharing, for me personally, um, I've always kept GS24 close to my heart because, I mean, who doesn't want to be happy and we basically have the secret of happiness at our hands. So I was a part of this organization in college where we had this activity called FTK or For the Kids, which is an annual mini Olympics for children with special needs. So we get a bunch of kids from different centers and we pair them with student volunteers, with alumni volunteers, and they all have an Olympic around the school together. And as a member of that organization, we are the ones who are in charge of all of the preps. So during that year, I was part of the creatives committee. We were in charge of setting up the backdrops, making the props look pretty, making sure that everything was in theme. And in order for us to do that, we had to stay up pretty late in school preparing all of those things. So we finished our tasks at around 1 a.m. or 12 midnight and our call time the next day was 3 a.m. And during that day, that full day of Olympics, we're not resting and sitting around. We're running around, managing everything, making sure everything and everyone is okay. So you can imagine the tiredness you felt of only having like 30 minutes or 40 minutes of sleep and being expected to run around in the sun, trying to take pictures of everyone, trying to manage everything. It's very stressful if you think about it. But at the end of the day, the tiredness that you feel is removed because you feel so fulfilled about how happy you made these children and how happy you made these Atequia volunteers. So that's one of my favorite gift stories. So despite it being very stressful, you find so much joy and fulfillment in it as well. But now you might be asking, um, Mika, we're in the middle of a pandemic. How are we supposed to have our own Olympics for children? Or where am I supposed to go to volunteer right now, especially that we're all stuck at home? Or it's so hard to be a gift right now. I don't have enough money to send donations or ayudas to my friends. But don't you worry, super spy. I got you covered. Remember when I told you that we had gadgets? Well, the biggest gadget that we have is our bodies. We can actually use our bodies in many, many ways in order for us to be a gift and you don't need to change anything about it because your body was already created in such a way that allows you to make a gift of yourself to others. So let's play a little game. Let's shake, shake, shake a bit. Let's rest. I mean, we're all, we've been in front of the screen for a long time. Let's play a game. So this game is called the body part challenge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name you a body part and you have to think of a way in which you can make a gift of yourself to another person using that body part. Okay? 
Okay, I don't know if there's a comment section, but if you want, you can comment down below. Try to be as creative as you can with your answers, and I'll be sure to check them out. Your funny part is dun dun dun, dun your hands. I'll give you five seconds to think of a way you can make a gift of yourself to another person using your hands. Go! And time's up! Okay, so what ideas do you have? That sounds great! I know, I'm just like Dora, right? My favorite answers that I've ever heard when I gave this body part challenge activity out to a group of grade 3 students. The student said, I can make a gift of myself using my hands to my teachers by writing neatly so the teacher won't have a hard time reading my work. So even in the littlest of things that we do, we can make a gift of ourselves to others. And remember, there's nothing that we need to change because our bodies were already created in such a way that allows us to be a gift. Not only did I want to tell you that we are called to be a gift and that's the answer to mission number two, but I wanted to give you some tips as well on how we can all be better gifts. So I have four quick tips on how we can be better gifts to other people. Let's go! Gift tip number one. Be creative. Being a gift doesn't mean buying other people gifts. It means that what can we do to be able to help other people? So I gave this homework to my grade 10 students before and some of the projects that they made were really, really remarkable. So some ideas that they had were to read stories to their younger siblings, to set the table for their family, to bake for their family, to share food, to not use plastic to help the environment, to give letters to their friends, to go to mass together, and to just spend quality time with the people around them. So those things don't require any money. You can just literally be there for someone and that's already you making a gift of yourself to them. Gift tip number two, be sensitive. Look at the people around you. Think about those who need help right now that you might not be noticing. Think about what people need and what you're able to offer to make their lives a little bit easier. Tip number three, receive the gift and allow others to also make a gift of themselves to you. Remember, a gift isn't a gift unless it's received. So give others that chance to also make a gift of themselves to you. And gift tip number four, it's for everyone. Whether you're a little kid, whether you're a middle-aged kid, whether you're an adult, whether you're a grandma or a grandpa, we're all capable of making a gift. As long as you have a body, you can make a gift of yourself. And this is where I'd like to insert, since it is for everyone, especially us able youth, all the more we should make an effort in, in being a gift. I have some students, um, when they were two and a half years old, they all had to wash their hands after we did a painting activity. And this one little student of mine couldn't reach it. And without any prompting from teacher, the student who was slightly taller than her reached over and grabbed the soap and gave her some soap because she couldn't reach it. And he helped her wash her hands. So something as simple as that, that a two-year-old is able to pick up on, what more someone who has graduated high school or who is in college or who's currently in high school, we can be even more creative and even more gifty to other people. So I challenge you to live up to this calling of ours to be a gift to others. So detectives, have we accomplished our mission for today? What is the answer to mission number one? Who are we? Love and sons and daughters of That's God. That's right. And mission number two, what are we called for? Very good. Today, we discovered that who we are or our identity lies in the fact that we are beloved sons and daughters of God and that can never be taken away from us. And that we are called to be a gift by loving others with that same total, fruitful, self-giving love that Christ loves us with. I have a souvenir for you for attending this talk, and that souvenir is the biggest gadget that you will ever have, which is your body. So I want you to use your body during this pandemic, after this pandemic, and for the rest of your life. Use it because this is your biggest gadget for you to be able to make a gift of yourself to others. And with it, you'll be able to live out what you were truly made for. So bye-bye, detectives. Good job. Mission accomplished.